but I want to share my Atlas passive tree, which is designed to give you guys an easy league start while still maintaining good profitability. This is structured in a way that increases your character power. It doesn't increase monster power and the league mechanics are easy to do on any build. It also has a pseudo wandering path tech where it helps accelerate us through the tiers of maps to get all our Atlas passives as quickly as possible. So let's start from the beginning. We are going to path through the bottom. I am playing a Spark League starter. This is catered to Spark, and I will point out the places where you could choose to deviate. And the first one is right here. Spark is extremely good with Shrines, so that's why we're taking Shrines. It really increases our character power. If you don't think Shrines affect your build, you can just skip these four points. Now we're going to path through the nodes that give us extra chance at Kirak missions on completion. This is just nice to fill out any small gaps in our mapping progression. We will want to take the nodes in here. This is just a travel point. We're not going to make use of this, but these also increase map drops. And if you are taking shrines, there's more shrine nodes here. Otherwise, we're just beelining straight up to Unwavering Vision, which instantly grants us 20 Atlas skill points. We are going to spend those on the pseudo wandering path tech, which is simply grabbing every node that gives us 2% chance to drop a connected map. And this will act, this will take a little bit more than 20 points, but you'll just keep filling this out. I'm gonna grab these shaping nodes, which help progress us into higher tiers of maps. And then another way to increase character power is through getting 100% chance to get Nico and using Pact with Energy. And that's pretty easy to do this league. So Pact with Energy is gonna give us plus three to maximum LE res as we go through the map. It's gonna give us over 100% increased damage as we progress through the map and up to 45% movement speed as well. And we're gonna grab Nico points here, grab some three Nico points right here. And uh, the other three points are up here and that's a hundred percent. It's really easy to just guarantee these buffs for every single map. Super nice on a league start when your character is still struggling. So that is the extent of the next progression. Now it starts to get into an area where you can be a bit more flexible. So what I chose to do for Spark is I chose to do Alva because Spark is really good at Alva. Now you could use these points elsewhere. This is These are the flex points. I'm grabbing Alva over here, grabbing these Alva nodes, these Alva points as well. I forgot to have this in the initial tree, but once we get into the higher tier maps, we're going to be getting a lot of sulfite per node, and it starts to make sense to spend the five points to grab mining byproducts. So once every roughly three maps, we're going to get a chunk of Azerite, which will build up. You can use it to buy a bunch of resonators to get a little bit of extra currency. So depending on the price of resonators, you know, you could opt to spend these five points. All right. And moving on to the final tree, this is where we spec into blight. Now, whenever I've done blight in the past for a league start, it's been pretty profitable. And blight is really good this league because we're getting toxic sewer back, which is the absolute best map for blight. Now, if you don't know, when you spawn a blight and you're in a really narrow map like toxic sewer it can force there to be only one blight lane and if there's only one blight lane it's guaranteed to be the one that drops oils and blighted maps and that's the the best node you can get and it'll drop a ton of them because it'll only be one lane you'll still get the same amount of loot as if it was eight lanes but they'll all be the premium drops so we're going to grab the blight nodes here the blight nodes here blight nodes here over here, these two nodes down here. And Blight is a really nice league start strategy because especially on a map like Toxic Sewer, you could easily just AFK your character. The success of a Blight strat really hinges on the map layout. So once we have this fully flushed out, we're gonna wanna start to focus on getting a few favorite map slots. And what you'll likely do is favorite Toxic Sewers in all your favorite slots except for one. Then in the last one, you're gonna favor the best map that is connected to toxic sewer because we have such a high chance of dropping a connected map that if we ever run out of toxic sewers we'll just run 
the other favorited map we've done in that map will drop a lot of toxic sewers through this passive tree. You don't need to be Spark to do this strategy. It's still very easy on any League starter, but specifically Spark, this is just very, very satisfying. With respect to the Blight mechanic, I do a video on my channel, Blighted Map Farming Strategy. I'm going to link this in the pinned comment on this video. It goes over some very budget ring anoints you can use. It also talks about tower strategy. Now, this video is focused on how to farm blighted maps, which are the maps that drop from these blight encounters. However, it's still going to be the same information for how you're going to treat the blight in the toxic sewers that we're running. Now, next up, I have a tier list of some possible candidates for your map favorite slot. Toxic Sewer is S tier, and then right below that, it is Phantasmagoria and Waste Pool. These are probably the three best maps to guarantee us that single lane of Blight rewards, which is going to give us the really juicy rewards. Another important thing to know is that the reason why we're delaying specking the Blight points until the very end of the Atlas tree is because you can only get Golden Oils from T13 and above. So you really don't even want to be wasting your time doing Blight in your white and yellow maps. That's why we're rushing straight to red maps. Make sure when you're in the red maps, try and, try and run T13 maps and above if you have them. Now, the final thing I want to leave you guys with is how to properly use oil extractors, which will be dropping somewhat infrequently while we're doing the Blight mechanic. We're also going to be dropping amulets and rings that have anointments already on them. And you want to use the oil extractor on one that has a golden oil. Without having to memorize exactly what has golden oils, you can just use Awaken Path of Exile Trade, and then you hit Control D on the item. And if it does have a golden oil, it is going to tell you right here. So as you can see, this one has a gold, gold, or opalescent. It has to be uncorrupted, so it can't be, it can't be a, a talisman. We're just going to right click this, click on this, and we have a two third chance to get the gold. And we succeeded. So we got a free golden oil. That's generally the gist of the strategy. You're going to drop a lot of blighted maps. It's up to you if you want to sell them or run them. But again, we do have the pinned video in the comments if you do want to run those. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you live on Twitch. The Path of Exile 3.24 League Start.